Safegum on course to achieve financial and operational stability, reducing its gross outstanding debt by nearly 82 billion rand. That's an enormous amount. It's generated revenue of over 204 billion rand in the past financial year, but the power utility ultimately suffered over an 18 billion rand loss because it has to service that huge debt, uh, releasing its annual results this afternoon. Her, our reporter Heidi Jokos was there, and she joins us now. Hello, Heidi. So um, ESCOM is doing so much to try and deal with the massive problems it's facing, uh, but against that enormous debt, it seems to be a bit of an uphill battle. Yes, certainly, Sally, and I think uh, on everybody's minds is how is ESCOM going to pay back this debt? Uh, and also just looking at the losses that it incurred uh, in the last financial year. But we are joined by the group uh, executive, uh, Andre Dureta. Thanks so much for your time, sir. We appreciate it. I think if we can just start off with um, how ESCOM was able to pay off some of its debts, if we can speak to how much was paid off, how much debt still needs to be paid off um, and just some of um, the losses incurred in the last financial year especially because of COVID-19. So we reduced our debt by about 81 billion rand during the financial year. Uh, we were fortunate enough to receive um, assistance from National Treasury to the tune of 56 billion uh, but obviously we also saved money um, internally and then we were also supported by a stronger rand uh, half of our debt is uh, dollar or euro denominated, so upon conversion into rands, uh, the stronger rand helped us there. And just speak to us in terms of further projects that ESCOM is looking at moving into, such as wind and solar. Um, speak to us about when we could possibly be seeing those projects coming in, and as we do know uh, that many are calling for moving away from um, coal uh, as, uh, because of the impact that it's had on the environment. But also if you can speak to the fact that uh, the Mineral Resources Minister, Gweda Mantashe, um, is not too enthusiastic with uh, the project of moving towards wind and solar. So the uh, policy document that governs the mix of uh, generation technologies in South Africa is the IRP-19, Integrated Resource Plan. Uh, the proposals that we're putting forward are compliant with uh, IRP-19, and uh, we therefore look forward to, um, on the one hand, enabling private sector investment in generation, which we believe is important and a key part of the future of the electricity industry, but also from our perspective to enable us to uh, play a part in the just energy transition by giving a softer landing to some of the people who would be at risk from a socioeconomic perspective in the event of an old power station retiring. And speak to us about municipal debt. We do know that this has been a major issue. Have we seen uh, payment by municipalities, especially those that uh, owe a large number uh, to ESCOM? Um, uh, and where are we in terms of that? So we, we have seen an improvement in municipal payment rates. Uh, we are doing at this point in time about one billion rand better than target. That doesn't take away from the fact that uh, defaulting municipalities still owe us uh, 39 billion rand, which is about 10 percent of our total debt. So if we can collect that money, obviously it will make a big dent in our outstanding debt. Um, some municipalities are cooperating very well. In fact, uh, the majority of those with whom we are entering into so-called active partnering engagements to enable them to collect money that is due to them in order for them to pay us. Uh, the notable exception is Maluti Apufong, which is um, Harry Smith. And uh, that municipality, unfortunately, um, appears uh, not to want to pay us and uh, the people who are going to suffer are the residents of the town regrettably. And speaking of the residents, many have uh, raised their concerns and frustration over load reduction in many of the areas. Uh, perhaps speak to us about why load reduction is continuing and if it's ever going to end and also the issue of load shedding. Uh, many are saying that this year uh, South Africa suffered um, 
load shedding on a large scale and uh, given the impact of COVID-19 that it's had on businesses suffering load shedding as well is just uh, it's been a huge impact. Speak to us about load reduction and load shedding where we are in terms of that. So load reduction is something that we implement at a local level at a distribution level in order to protect our transformers from overloading predominantly where there are uh, many illegal connections. So when people connect to the grid um, through so-called Isen Yoka, and uh, what then happens is that our transformers get overloaded, they overheat and may explode or burn out. Now to avoid that risk, but also to save the cost, we then reduce the load to those specific areas where there is this high incidence of electricity theft. Uh, and the solution, of course, is for those residents to start paying uh, because then we know who those customers are and we can build a network that will service them. But if you steal, you can't expect to have a consistent supply of electricity. Now, load shedding is something that we do at a national level in order to protect the grid from a complete blackout, which, of course, will be a disastrous event, as we saw recently in Texas. Now, um, this is something that we implement as a last resort. It's something that we want to avoid where possible. But when I joined ESKIM um, in January of last year, I made it quite clear that while we carry out uh, the so-called reliability maintenance program in order to catch up with a backlog of maintenance, there would be an elevated risk of load shedding as we increase our plan maintenance in order to um, address some of these um, poor, uh, poorly maintained, um, less reliable units. Now, we have made progress. We have seen a change in our unplanned outages and an improvement in our planned maintenance. So while it's too early to proclaim a victory over load shedding as yet, we are seeing the first green shoots of an improvement in the reliability of our generation system. Can you give me a time frame? Because I think I'm one of the many South Africans that cannot handle load shedding. I don't know of any South African who, <laughs> who appreciates load shedding, nor do I. Um, what we need is additional new generation capacity on the grid. And the IPP office, under the leadership of the DMRE, is working hard at uh, opening up further bid windows to enable exactly that. As soon as those electrons are on the grid, load shedding should be a thing of the past. Okay, great. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. That is uh, the CEO of ESCOM, uh, Andre De Reta. Unfortunately, Sally, not a specific time frame for when load shedding will end, but hopefully uh, sooner than later. And, uh, of course, some of the... Um, the benefits uh, of uh, you know more capacity coming onto the grid, such as the IPPs, which mm. will uh, take the strain off the grid and, of course, reduce load shedding because I'm sure a lot of people want that to be over and done with. And, of course, the impact that it has on the economy. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Hadi Jokos there.